pure experiences. Welcome to the voice version of the blog, Pure Experiences. You are listening to the article, Obstacles and Their Cures, Part 4. Published on the 6th of February, 2017 by Tarun Pradhan. Published on, pureexperiences.blogspot.com. Narrated by, Charlie Jacob. Obstacles and Their Cures, Part 4. The following may read like total BS to those who haven't experienced any of it. Such events or experiences do not seem like natural and get classified as supernatural. But anything goes in the realm of the mind. It's all natural there. Anyhow, I don't claim the below as factual. It's all mysterious. If it's in your experience, it is a fact. Else, not. I do not have an extensive and in-depth knowledge or experience in such matters but have encountered enough weirdness so that I'm not any more amazed if anyone tells me some odd thing that happened. I'm amazed, however, when someone tells me that such things are impossible. Paranormal phenomena are a norm when your path is not so normal. By not normal, I mean its trajectory goes via unknown or unknowable terrain of the mind. When you encounter something that you do not encounter so frequently, it gets classified as paranormal. A smartphone is an example of a paranormal thing for an Amazonian tribal who never encountered a modern man with a smartphone before. When you take up above kinds of paths, you are like that Amazonian tribal. Things are neither normal nor paranormal. You are either inexperienced or experienced. We have discussed physiological manifestations and purification of body. It's borderline paranormal. It freaks you out successfully. Once you get used to it, it's all normal. The first paranormal event a seeker may encounter is presences of all kinds. You can't see them, but you can feel them. A meditator will often hear voices. Some are hallucinations, some are not. So we are still on the borderline. There is no sharp, boundary between normal and paranormal. As you must have guessed, Mother Nature doesn't draw sharp boundaries. It becomes certainly paranormal only when you can see or hear them repeatedly and can often make them appear on whim. A meditator will hear knocking sounds, like a wall being hit with a small click stick or like finger snaps. You can actually confirm that it's not a hallucination because you can open your eyes, get up, and is still there, and others can probably hear it too. It will happen exactly at the moment you are settled into a peaceful state of mind. It brings you back. Kills that state. And hence, we are dealing with such things under the heading of obstacles. You may get scared and stop going to that room alone. Or worse, you may drop your practice. You will find that once you drop your practice, all weirdness stops makes you wonder. Second very common paranormal event is out-of-body experiences or astral projections. Experiences of leaving the body, being just point consciousness floating around, remote viewing stuff, being able to see through walls and seeing your own body sitting on a cushion peacefully meditating are very common experiences. Out-of-body experiences can go wild when you encounter human-like entities and find yourself in strange worlds. For some, it's fun. It's also a city, but for most, it's a nightmare. It scares them like nothing, and they drop the practice. Some may encounter negativity, but it's very rare, and is an indication that you are doing something stupid. Like attracts like, but it is enough to throw you away from the whole practice. Fortunately, many paranormal events are of positive kind. Strange synchronicities are common. Accidentally, you get exactly the book that you need most. You meet exactly your kind of teacher. Events magically arrange themselves to cause a highly improbable event that instantly teleports you way ahead on your path. It's not bad at all. It becomes an obstacle if you let it affect your practice. You assume that your practice is of a wrong kind, and you give it up, and you're too afraid to practice. Or perhaps... 
go in reverse and try to experience more paranormal because it's fun and remain stuck with petty paranormal stuff instead of going ahead. You've turned your extraordinary experiences into an extraordinary obstacle. So why does it happen? For the same reason normal stuff happens. It is what it is. You are dealing with a mindscape directly. You are editing it, making changes, adding things in it. Moreover, your mind is more open and peaceful and less afflicted with fossilized beliefs. Mind is dissolving its old boundaries and barriers that it erected to keep you bound to the physical and to the ego. You have already seen enough to know anything is possible in the realm of the mind. It's infinitely creative, malleable, responsive, and mysterious. In your journey towards the self, you are exploring thus far unknown territories of the mind. You are digging tunnels in it. And occasionally, some tunnels, some caverns take you to an unusual place, a place you've never been before. It opens the doors to more, unless, of course, you run out of there throwing your whole practice on the way. How to deal with it? Best way is to ignore and carry on. Stuff happens. Your practice is more important, not the stuff, normal or otherwise. It doesn't last. It comes and it goes, or becomes normal because it's an everyday occurrence. We easily get conditioned into it. If you are scared, know it well. Knowledge kills the fear of the unknown. If it's irritating, try different things, like pausing the practice for a while, changing the place of practice, purifying the place with a strong intention, or taking the help of someone else who has some experience and has stronger intentions. Lastly, other experienced seekers and teachers can help you if it becomes too messy. If you encounter negativity, immediately reevaluate what you are doing. Is there a better path? Is that practice unsuitable for you? Are you afflicted with intense anger, fear, or lust? Is your practice directed at harming someone, meddling with nature, or are you madly pursuing powers? As I said, like attracts like. Purify yourself first. Don't try to control or manipulate what is beyond your capability. We can only fix ourselves. This magic formula applies in paranormal conditions too. If you find that you are hankering after paranormal experiences, know that your ego has turned your practice into a cheap entertainment for itself. Something from which you can learn a lot has become an obstacle. It's stopping you from learning now. You may encounter deities, guides or non-physical creatures of all kinds. They may offer help. Use them for your progress only if you think you are capable of that. Else, remember that looks can be deceiving. It is entirely possible that the mind throws a bone of paranormal that sends you off chasing it. To ensure its survival, when it learns that such experience, experiences easily distracts you. It will do even the impossible to prevent its delusion. Of course, you're not killing the mind. You cannot. But it perceives your practice as a danger. Isn't the mind itself that is practicing? Yes, that's a real funny thing. The higher parts of the mind are trying to clean the lower parts. It's slightly convoluted but not difficult to understand. Minor powers or cities may or may not manifest on the course of your practice. And if they do, they generally end up being obstacles. You suddenly discover that you can do something amazing, which very few people can do. So you run after it like mad. You get engrossed in it. It's novel. It's fascinating. It's fun. If the powers of a is of a paranormal nature, the distraction is even more effective. By the time you're done playing with it, you will realize that you are stuck at the same point in your path since years and have accumulated a ton of consequences, fruits of your unusual actions that are waiting to bring unusual troubles for you. 
what could have been a fun learning opportunity has been turned into a major obstacle. I've never seen an ego that does not love power. That's what an ego wants, to be powerful, to be in control. It gets its agenda fulfilled, even if it gets the slightest edge in the struggle for survival. It gives prime importance to powers. It drops on its knees before those who have powers. It gets to taste their fruits just by licking the feet of a powerful person. Power corrupts. Plus, we already have many powers. These are just the extraordinary abilities of the mind, which we have discussed in depth before. We do not notice them because it's normal. Many people have them. They do not enchant us or give us an abnormal advantage in the race for survival, so we just ignore them. Extreme intelligence is one such power. Sharp memory. Strong attention. Ability to remain uninfluenced by egoic tendencies or emotions. Artistic and aesthetic abilities. Imagination and creativity. And many other such abilities are just minor cities that the mind acquires during its evolution. If animals could talk, they'd call us miracle makers. The abilities humans have are amazing. It's just that we have become habitual of seeing them around. They, and they no longer get classified as extraordinary powers. People who can draw or paint or compose beautiful music are seen as gifted. We forget that it's a mental power. People with very high intelligence who are hyper-imaginative and extremely creative are rare, but appear magical and extraordinary, like Nikola Tesla or Da Vinci. People with extraordinary mathematical and logical abilities are also rare. This gift can be seen as a minor power. One can only dream of acquiring them. People with photographic memories are rare too, who can memorize entire books in hours and recite them word by word after 20 years, or recall everything they saw or did on any particular day of their life. They exist. We call them autistic savants. Their minds are different, and hence, brains are different too. It is considered odd, a psychoneurological exception. However, in my opinion, they just possess minor powers. We have already discussed some examples of minor powers that are somewhat more non-ordinary, such as out-of-body experiences or sensing things. Another common ability a newbie seeker may get is the ability to sense the character or intention of a person. He may get highly attracted or repulsed by certain people merely by being with them for a minute. He may sense dangers before they happen, may get small premonitions. These are infrequent and impermanent. Some advanced seekers may develop mediumistic tendencies, can develop the art of auto-writing or channeling. Some get remote viewing abilities. Some get unexplainable abilities to attract wealth and beautiful women. Some get abilities to diagnose diseases or to cure them magically, predicting future, ability to harm people from a distance, ability to read other minds and thoughts or to man manipulate them. Ability to stay away, stay awake in dreams, to astral travel and meet entities at will, ability to influence and manipulate people for worldly powers, so on, so on and so forth. There can be hundreds of them. These are all minor powers. So why do powers appear? We always had them. A better question will be, why did they disappear? and we became so limited. The short answer is to experience a limited human life for various reasons. What you call powers is just a gradual unveiling of what's already there. It's not something new. Our human limitations are new, an add-on. They begin reappearing as we reach nearer to our home, which is ourself, the infinite, powerful, creative, and omnipotent no-thing. First real realization that dawns is that the mind is universal. Our individual minds are just disconnected fragments of it. The world, body, and brain are artificial barriers that separate us individuals from accessing the universal extent of the mind. Once you understand this, all answers to the paranormal fall into place. For example, 
reading others' minds becomes a child's play because, because now you can access the part of the universal mind as your barriers are dissolving. You can heal others because the bodies are just mental structures in the megastructure called mind. And you can manipulate any bodies as easily as you manipulate your own thoughts. As a homework, try explaining all those powers in the light of the fact that all is one. There, there is no separation. How to stop them from being an obstacle? It is very important to ignore them and to not act on the urge to use them. Sometimes you can't help it. It's involuntary. But some powers can be controlled, and their use for egoic purposes becomes a certainty if you don't know how harmful it can all be. These are much more than mere physical actions. If you meddle with powers, you are meddling with creation at a deeper layer. That action will produce consequences that are beyond your grasp. You won't be able to see what the action is doing. Being ignorant, you go on using them indiscreet indiscreetly, and the hidden consequences go on accumulating. I have no idea what fruits they can produce, but I'm sure you won't like it. More importantly, mad pursuits and use of powers and their consequences will totally kill your practice. Forget about a clean and clear solution here. If power manifests, you know them well. Learn from them. They can provide direct experiences and deep insights and can help to actually progress rapidly on your path. They can be used for growth or to obliterate other obstacles and make life easy for you. One needs to display a lot of maturity and wisdom to do that. We do not see rampant use of powers in the physical world for this very reason. People who have them know how to use them, not to make a magic show out of them. The consequences are not worth it. Chances are that you will see some powers only after you reach an evolved state. If you see, the, see them at a fairly early stage, know it's just a distraction thrown by the mind to create an obstacle on your path. Discussion on obstacles will continue in the next chapter. They come in limitless varieties. Pure Experiences You are listening to Pure Experiences by Tharun Pradhan. For more please visit pureexperiences.blogspot.in